Hello, and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your Cardboard Concierge. Tonight we are checking in this hot new game, Carpe Diem from Stefan Feld, published by Ravensburger, part of the Aaliyah Big Box series, the latest Aaliyah Big Box game. This is a Kenner Spiel de Jar winner 2019. Lots of buzz on this one. I do have to give big thanks out to Ravensburger for sending me a review copy of this. No other compensation was provided. So I am Motuzo, the Tabletop Bellhop, your Cardboard Concierge, normally answering your game and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. I answer those questions over on the blog, tabletopbellhop.com, and you can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or go to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. You can see the answers to the questions there. You can also check out the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, as well as our YouTube and Twitch channels, where we stream live multiple times during the week. But enough about me. I know everyone wants to know what's in this box, so we're going to get to it right away. I'm going to start off, just let you know what's on the back of the box here. Rome 1 BC, an influential, as influential patricians, you set out to improve your city districts. Grow bountiful herb and vegetable gardens. Cultivate ponds rich with fish, build lavish villas, and various other dwellings for your servants. The day is yours to seize, and the city is ripe for rebuilding. A sophisticated and intriguing tile-laying game with high replay value due to its variable gameplay. That's uh, saying a lot. Uh, down in the corner it says it's 2 to 4 players, age 10 plus, 45 minutes to 75. That seems short for a feld. And I don't know what it's showing. 3 out of 10 for brains. So it shouldn't be a very heavy Steffenfeld game. We're going to crack this open. We're going to switch the view down a bit more. Because you don't need to see me. You want to see what's in the box. So I'm just starting off with a hobby knife. Going to cut this open. This is my first time looking at this game. I honestly know almost nothing about it. Except for the fact I love Steffenfeld. I'm a big fan of the Ravensburger and the Aaliyah series of games. And, well, anything that wins the Kenner Spiel, I'm a Euro fan. I'm probably going to like. But I haven't seen the game. I know nothing other than what I just read you. I got to say, does that not say Euro right there? Come on. Just look at that cover. All right. We have instructions. Sides of the box. Just say the name of the game. No advertising. Nothing else. We got a little bit of a, a overflow from the art. Rule book. That feels like a significant rule book. Uh, this is not in English, so we're going to put this one off to the side. Now we're going to take a look at another one. This one's backwards. This one is also not in English. And we get to... Okay, I didn't see a single English there. Nope, this was English. My bad. I can't read sideways very well. So three rule books, one in English. Uh, looks like we have German and French, possibly. Yeah, looks like French. So we have the rule book. We're already on the back, so we are looking at a 12-page rule book. There are rules on the back and the front, so a full 12 pages of rules. That is not a small rule book. There's an introduction, two to four players, ages 10 plus. Uh, being an Aaliyah game, I'm expecting sidebars. That is something they are known for. So what they've always done with all their rule books going way back is they have the actual rules here and then a summary here, which I find fantastic as a game teacher. Because once I learn how to play, I can just reference this section while I'm teaching. We do have a significant font size. It's nice and easy to read. Like, I can read it from here, which is nice to see. Not that I'm good at reading from this angle. I see lots of artwork. Looks like lots of examples. We got all kinds of symbols on the side. It looks like a Euro rule book. Not a lot more to say. No artwork except for game shots. There's no no fluff here at all. This is all just game. Goes right to the end of the game. So the last page is still end of game scoring. So there's no summary or anything like that. All right. I got to say, still looks like a Euro. We got Hobbit-sized cards. Never a huge fan of Hobbit-sized cards. But when you got a deck that big, I can get it for cost. More Hobbit-sized cards. We'll open those up later. I'm going to go through the rest of the components first. We have, I would assume, player colors. We are looking at your standard red, blue, yellow, and green. So it doesn't look like they're taking into account color blindness here. Uh, these are wooden, pretty much standard 
board game piece little discs. What looks more interesting is what's in this next bag. Oh, we do have bonus baggies. I gotta say that's an improvement. Ravensburger and Aaliyah were, were never known for their additional components. So having extra baggies in there is a nice touch. I like to see that nowadays. Then we have some really nice looking meeple here. Well, I'm calling them meeple, but they're, they're not your traditional meeple. So in the player colors, you have some form of shadow pawn. It's a little hard, I can't quite besides, it's just, I don't know, probably a senator or something. Then we have fish and grapes. There's some neat looking components here. We got grapes. Try to get an angle, a better angle of this. Some purple grapes. We got some brown chickens. Okay, I'm amused that there's chickens. Chicken. We got a fish. Blue fish. These are all wood painted. And then we have a leaf. And I think that's it. Yeah, I'm not going to pull out more than those. Chicken grapes. And we have a green leaf. Nice looking components. Better than your standard cubes. I'm sure they could have very easily just given you a purple cube and a blue cube. It's nice to see them actually cut out into shapes. All right, then we start into punch boards. We are gonna have a bunch of these, I'm sure. Two-sided, just green on the one side. We got buildings. We got darker green with lighter green. So to me, that's indicating there's probably two phases to the game. That you play through one phase and the other, or there's a change based on the number of players. All right, one of these has fallen out, which to be honest, is a good sign. That means it's easy to punch. This, that took a little bit of pressure. It's not the best cut, but I don't see any extra bits on the um, hanging behind. Cardboard's decent thickness. Artwork's nice and clear to see. We got a river here. It's got some nice little extra bits on there to add some graphical elements to it. You can see the pathways here have some details. It's not that abstract. At least there's some artwork there. Then we have the board. Didn't bother wasting money on putting artwork on the other side of the board. I gotta admit, I appreciate that. Way too often nowadays, companies are putting artwork on the back of the board for no particularly good reason. All right, not knowing the game, who knows? It looks like it's probably some kind of pool you're drafting from, but I honestly do not know. Cards are obviously gonna go here, tiles are gonna go here. To me, this looks like a market board. Again, I don't know the name, don't know the game. It's a nice mounted board, nice thickness, folds up nice. No complaints there. It looks like we're gonna build a frame. So there's gonna be a frame probably making a communal play area. All kinds of stuff on this frame. Victory point tokens. We're gonna go through this pretty quick because this is basically the same kind of stuff we saw before. These I noticed are in color coded, brown, white, green, I have no idea what those are supposed to be. Looks something like a fruit or something. I wonder each player might have their own frame because there's an awful lot of frame pieces here. That's quite a few punch boards. Oh, a nice summary card. Always a fan. Individual player board. Are there four of those? Yes, there are. Yep. Four of those. Individual player boards with summary cards at the bottom. Nice. And then a frame probably to go around each individual player board. Looks interesting. Um, it's kind of hard to say more. That's the end of the box. Seeing as I haven't read the instructions, I haven't played the game. The cards do have a nice quick release, quick plastic removal thing. I'm going to go through these on the back. Uh, these all say A. So we have a stack of A. Which we'll put here. We'll move that out of the way. So we have A. I'll flip these over in a bit. We have a B stack, which is also in a slightly different color. Though I gotta admit, not much of a different color. C. 
see. D. I noticed the D stack is significantly bigger for whatever reason. I'll leave those aside. So looking at the A cards, we have chickens. And we have fish. These all say one victory point. They show two leaves. We'll just hold those up. Not a lot to see there. Very clear icons, though. Like, I can tell that's very much the same symbol that was the fish meeple. Bees. These look like your probably orders you're fulfilling now because all of a sudden the bees need multiples. For example, this one's worth eight points. And you need one of each of the resources or one of each of the things. And I'm guessing these are points because low rolls for points has been a thing in board games as long as I've been playing. That's the B. C. Oh, I have no idea what those represent, but they're squares. Probably patterns on your board. Who knows? And these look like they might give some kind of bonus instead of points. I'll hold that up a little closer. Iconography looks clear enough, though I don't know what they mean right now. And then these, again, are going to show you a bunch of actions at the bottom, or points, so there's both. Who knows? Lots of ways to score points or get things. Very icon-based. I did notice there was a summary card, so that's going to be nice. Probably be a lot of use the first time we play. These also have a number of dots on them. I have no idea if that has anything to do with anything. Looks like all the Ds have the same number of dots. All right, the other deck of cards. Very easy to open, appreciate that. I'll sort them by the bag, we have a bunch that say one. Wow, a lot that say one. Oh, they're the victory point symbol. There's a bunch of one victory points, a bunch of three victory points. So these may just be money or a way to track victory points. I didn't see a scoring track. It'd be interesting if a game, a Steffenfeld game used cards to track victory points. That's highly possible at this point, 25s. Then we have more of these, which look very similar to the other ones, but they have a green on the back. So they have a green symbol on the back. And then again, they show something gives victory points. Something gives victory points. Not having played the game and not knowing what yellow cross means, I couldn't actually tell you. Cards themselves are uh, standard thickness. They're the standard uh, hobbit size cards. I like to call them the smaller cards. I assume they probably fit your standard sleeves. And then these literally are two-sided. They just say 1, 3, 5, 10, and 25 on the other side. So card-based victory point tracking. Interesting. I haven't seen anything like that in a long time. People hate paper money. I wonder if they're going to hate the victory point tracking with this. Looks like there's going to be a lot of scoring because all of those are victory point cards. So that's it. That is Carpe Diem. We're going to put everything back. To be honest, I'm going to steal one of these baggies right now to put these cards in so they don't slide all over the box while it's waiting to get played. If you check out tabletopbellhop.com, there's a chance I've already reviewed this game. If I haven't, be sure to watch my social media, Tabletop Bellhop, one word. And I will be sure to let everyone know when I do get this played. We will feature it on our podcast, Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which you can find on your podcatcher. All right, we are going to throw the punch boards in first. Uh, no box insert of any sort, but they did give us baggies. Fair. I like at least getting baggies. At least some way to control, store my games. Can't say much on this one. I, it's a stuff and felt. Who knows? Until I read the instructions and how to play. I am looking forward to it. The fact they won a spiel, it should be great. The fact it's a stuff and felt is a pretty good chance. I'm going to enjoy it on its own. There we go. So, that was Carpe Diem from Steffenfeld that you probably can't quite read, and Ravensburger, a, the latest in the Aaliyah, Aaliyah Big Box series. Style of fantastic Euro game. Some of the best games I've ever played are part of that series. Uh, they know how to pick them. I'm a huge Steffenfeld fan. This looks good. I, I know nothing about the game, so 
looking at the components, they were as expected, a ton of smaller size cards. I do prefer large cards, but you know what? They take up more room. They cost more to produce. I get it. Uh, a ton of cards and a ton of tiles on solid punch boards and some really well done meeples that I think could have easily been cubes. And it's nice to see that they were, they were shaped, right? So you had the leaf and the fish and that. I'm uh, looking forward to this. This one looks good. Um, no complaints about anything I saw in that box there whatsoever. So for Tabletop Bellhop, I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. Uh, you can catch all my content at tabletopbellhop.com. I also have a newsletter. If you head to newsletter.tabletopbellhop.com, I send out an email once a week letting you know what content we put out in the last week, including things like these unboxing videos, actual plays, reviews, and other cool gaming stuff. For Tabletop Bellhop, good night. Game on.